Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we bless you. We honor you. Thank you for another day, another great and mighty day, wonderful day you have made. Lord, because it is you that made this day, even this moment, we will be glad, we we'll rejoice in it. More so that we have come into your presence, O oh God. Yes, to, 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 to hear your word, to, to worship you, to, to receive instructions in righteousness. Yes, to receive grace. Indeed, yes, Lord, to find grace to help in this time of need. I thank you for the assurances. I thank you for your promises you are giving to us that are all in you. And amen. I thank you, Lord, for the things you have done tonight. Thank you for illuminating our hearts. Yes, giving us understanding of your word and granting us the grace to put your word to work in our lives. Hallelujah. So that you and you alone be glorified. I want to thank you, Lord, for healing the sick tonight, for setting captives free tonight. I want to thank you, Mary God, for the spirit, yes, of boldness that have risen in the life of your sons and daughters to take their place and enforce the victory of Jesus in every area of their lives, that you alone be glorified. Thank you for answer to these prayers. Blessed be your holy and mighty name, our God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So I welcome everybody again to another wonderful time in God's presence. God is here. So we are going to continue with this uh, message that we titled Enforcing the Victory of Jesus in Your World. This is second session, part two. Yes, Enforcing the Victory of Jesus in Your World. Hallelujah. And this all came about because of the things we heard during the seasons of refreshing about the cross of Jesus. That through the cross of Jesus, through the cross indeed, Jesus destroyed the devil that had the power of death. And you know, because Satan is a liar, he's a deceiver, he has been defeated. But you see, he goes about, you know, deceiving people, pretending, giving the impression that he still has power. <laughs> but child of God, he's a powerless devil. He's a powerless devil. His power is a powerless power. Hallelujah. But thank the Lord that Lord has given us what? Power over all the powers of the enemy. Power all the powers of, of the enemy. Hallelujah. So we are grateful to God for bringing us to the place of understanding. So that with this understanding and knowledge, yes, we can take our place, you know, and stand our ground and keep our possessions and possess our possessions and stop the way against the wicked because he has no place in the kingdom of God and so he also has no place in our life. The Bible said the devil has been sent out of heaven. He has been cast out of heaven. Jesus Christ said, I, 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 see, I see Satan fall as, as lightning. <laughs> you know, you are, you are falling out from heaven and you have no place in our lives, in our bodies, in our mind because the Lord himself said he no longer dwells in temples made with hand. Our bodies are the temple of the Lord. Child of God, God dwells in you. He dwells in me. He dwells in us. In as much as you have made Jesus Christ the Son of God. Yes, your Lord and your Savior. Christ in you. Jesus is in you. So these are the things that God wants to speak to us so that we can have the boldness because of the assurance that he has given. Knowing that he, the Lord, cannot lie. He cannot repent of the things that he has said. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So may the Lord bless his word as we receive the word tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. James chapter, uh, Joshua chapter 1. Let's start from there. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. He said, Have not I commanded thee, the Lord speaking, you know, they have not I commanded thee. Haven't I commanded you? You see, in the past, he has commanded us. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a courage. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. The Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. The Lord is our God. This is one thing that I, I always appreciate, the fact that, you know, there are gods that are no God. But the Lord himself, <laughs> is it here, O Israel, the Lord, your God, is one Lord. There is only one Lord. You may, there is only one Lord. The Lord, capital letter L-O-R-D. 
is our God, the Lord, the Creator, the Omnipotent, the Omnipresent, the Omniscient, the Lord who exists all by Himself. His power by Himself. He is light. There's no darkness in Him. He is our God, our protection, our preserver, and our provider. He's everything to us. And when you have the Lord as your God, child of God, you are home and dry. Yes, and all you will need to trust and pray that the law should never be silent. Because it can be in you and be silent, depending on your relationship, or rather your fellowship with him. Your fellowship with him. So, the law says, have he not commanded us? Has he not commanded us? To be what? To be strong. Be strong. You know? Be strong and of a good courage. A good courage. A good courage. He said, don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. The Lord your God is with you. Wherever you go. Wherever you are now. The Lord is there. Wherever you go. Where you move, God moves with you. Because it's inside of you. It's not just with you. It's inside of you. There's a difference between... The, 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 the way God was with the children of Israel or the Old Testament saints, you know, God was not in them, but God was, with, God was always with them. So you see, God is not just with us today, but he's in us. God is in you. God is in you. And it's very important that you begin to develop that indwelling, that consciousness of the indwelling presence of the Lord. Because it will make a lot of difference in your life. That God is in you. The most high God. The creator of the universe. The one who never sleeps nor slumbers. He is in you. And this God that is in you. He said what? Be what? Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong. Be of a good courage. And don't be what? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. When you have the Lord as your God. Of course you need to know who the Lord is. When you know who is inside of you, then of course fear will find its place. Fear will disappear because you know who is with you. You know who is in you. Hallelujah. And he said, wherever you go. So it's not going to be with you when, when, when you are only in your home. But when you are on the road, in the marketplace, in the office, in the school, wherever you go, whether you are traveling in the sea, you are flying the air, whether you are traveling on the road, you are walking, wherever you go, wherever you are, God is there. Hallelujah. So, child of God, God himself is assuring us. Assuring us. Like we can see from this scripture. It's an assurance. Just like he also says in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will never God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. But I know that God can be in you, but be silent. <laughs> and I mentioned, I'm mentioning and saying that because that is why he said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. You understand my point? You grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not going to leave you, but the Holy Spirit will not be there. He will not be there. As though he's not there. So, he said he will never leave us, nor forsake us. So that we will not be afraid. When we know either God is with us, God is inside of us, we should not be afraid. But rather be bold and courageous and determined enough to exercise the authority and the power that he has given to us in Christ Jesus. He has given us authority. He has given us power. Hallelujah. He has given you what? both authority and power. He is not going to give you. He has given you already in Christ Jesus. And with this knowledge, child of God, if you have the knowledge, if you have the understanding, you have the revelation, of this knowledge, which knowledge? That God is in you, number one. He is with you, we know. And that he has given you what? Both authority and power. What will do this for you? I mean, what will do this for you? It will make you what? Confident. It will make you what? Confident and bold. 
to command or compare everything in and around you to fall in line or to line up with the victory of Jesus over Satan in your life. Do you understand that? Because God said he had given you power. <laughs> okay? He had given you authority. You don't, authority is not for sure. Authority is not for, it's not just for you to have it without using it. Do you understand my point? He gave it to you so that you can use it. Like he says, he said, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you shall be his witnesses beginning from where? Beginning from Jerusalem. Your Jerusalem is your own life. Not the Jerusalem in Palestine. But your own Jerusalem is in your own world. Your own world, first of all. Your own world, your own life. Exercise the authority, the power that God has given to you. Use it in your own life. Because child of God, people need to see God in you. People need to know that the Lord God Almighty, who you are and who you are serving, that he is the awesome God. He is a great and mighty God. And because he is in you and with you, the devil should do you nothing. You should not be wrong. You shouldn't be the one to run away from the devil. The devil should run away from you, depending on how you see God inside of you. Satan should run away from you. It's not that they will not come, but they will come, but they should run away from you. Because God said they will come in one way, but God will beg them to flee from in seven ways. When they see God in you, it is your faith in God that will make God as it were to show himself up in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So he has given you what? The authority, the power. And he's saying to you, don't be what? Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. But be what? Be courageous enough. Be strong enough to exercise the power that he has given to you. He has given you the power. Be courageous enough to exercise it. Don't be intimidated. <laughs> don't be intimidated by the enemy. Don't be intimidated by Satan, by his agents. Don't be intimidated. Hallelujah. So with this knowledge and understanding that is not only with you but in you, child of God, you should be confident enough to command and, dis and, and what? And compel, compel everything. I mean everything. In and around you, to line up with the victory of Jesus over Satan. So those things that are contrary to the will of God, you command them to take their place or get out, out of your life. Anything that is contrary to the will of God in your life, you command them to get out. You command them to get out. When you command them to get out, child of God, know that you have the backing, you have the backing of God. You have the backing of heaven. Because you say, whatever you bind on the earth, shall be bound in heaven. So whatever you, you bind on the earth, heaven will bind it. Child of God, listen, the rod of Moses, hear me, the rod of Moses, you know, like you say, it was the finger of God that did those things. Well, the rod of Moses became the rod of God. When Moses stretched out the rod, it was as though God himself was the one that stretched it out. And God cannot stretch his rod over and against the water, and the water will not obey. He said to Jeremiah, I put my word in your mouth. God has put his word in your mouth. So when you speak, it's as though God himself is the one speaking. He said for you to what? To root out. For you to what? To throw out, to scatter, destroy. So exercise the power. Use your mouth. Use your mouth. Command everything that is contrary to the will of God in your life to line up with the will of God. And command them to line up and get out. That which cannot line up. Of course, Satan cannot line up with the will. Satan can only, you see, you, oh yeah, it's the rebellious and disobedient beasts. You command the devil to leave you. Otherwise, Satan, very stubborn, he will not want to go. Because everything around the child of God must be in line with the will of God. God said, pray that his will be done on the earth. When you say on the earth, it's not just in some place. You are on this earth. Let the will of God be done in your life. 
anything contrary to the will of God should be rejected. You should reject anything contrary to the will of God, reject it. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So he said that you should resist the devil and he will flee. Resist. You don't resist by your own strength. You don't. He said, he said, he said, he said who are that old man thing? Thou shall be removed. By what? It's not, it's not by power, it's not by my mind. But by the spirit of the Lord. And then he said, you shall grace, grace to the mountain. Grace, grace upon the mountain. For the mountain will remove. When you speak to the mountain, the mountain will obey you. Because if Jesus Christ speaking, he said, have faith in God. Have, God. have faith in God. When you have faith in God, when you have faith on him, by whom mountains can be removed, the child of God, the mountains will be removed by you. As though God is the one removing the mountain. Yes. God is the one removing it. But God is using your mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you, my God. I bless you. So he said, resist the word, the devil, and he will flee from you. Why? Because he has given you the keys of hell. Excuse me. He has given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And the reason is asking us to bind and to lose the devil, listen to me. Satan has no ability to lock any door against you. Ask, ask, which key? Because to lock somebody up, you have to use a padlock or key. <laughs> you understand my point? Now, but the Lord Jesus Christ has taken the keys of hell and of death out of the hand of Satan. So if you ask me, or rather I will ask you, with which key will Satan now use? The keys, the keys of hell and of death, they are the keys of hell and of sickness, of poverty, and everything that hell will bring up against anybody. But Satan doesn't have that key again, or doesn't have those keys again. So if he doesn't have those keys, and Jesus has given the keys, the, key are, the keys are both all keys, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And he said, whatsoever you bind on this earth. In that word, if you bind the devil on the earth, Satan shall be bound. Heaven will, heaven, heaven will back your word and Satan will be bound. He said, whatever you lose, whatever the devils have chained before, whatever the devils have bound before, so whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So if you lose yourself, heaven will see that you are loose. If you lose yourself, if you declare, I lose myself, heaven will back it up. So God will go into our action. Holy God will go into our action. And you are loosened. Why? Because you are declared with authority that God has given to you. So you lose yourself and you bind the devil. Or you command Satan, lose your hold. When you say Satan, lose your hold. Of course, it is God that will make sure that the devil loses his hold. <laughs> because when God speaks, it is done. So you are the mouth of God. You are the mouth of God. Know it. Because he said, I put my word in your mouth. So you are the mouth of God. When you speak, it's as though God himself is speaking. Thank you, Jesus. So you should bind the enemies. Bind your enemies, child of God. Bind your enemies. Bind them. Be bold enough to bind them. Don't be afraid. I bind you, Satan, you spirits of witchcraft, you marine witchcraft, you serpent. I bind you and I command you, get out of my life. Come out, get out of my world. And lose your hold out of anything and everything belonging to me that you are holding on to. Lose your hold in Jesus' mighty name. Be bold. Be confident that when as you are saying it, God will honor your word, his word in your mouth. I think that is where the whole thing is. Be confident as you say it that God will honor his word. Be confident that God will honor his word in your mouth. Be bold enough. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. In the first instance, there is no place where God said they will not come. There is no place where God said on this earth, you are not going to have challenges. Challenges will come. Say many will be your affliction. But child of God, God will deliver you from every one of them. God will deliver you from every one of them. But child of God, you must exercise the power, the authority that God has given to you. 
They are not for show. They are not for fun. God didn't give you power for fun. To go about and say, I have power. I have, a, I have dominion. I have this. And you don't exercise it. Someone say, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. When you shut up your mouth in the face of any challenge, when you fail to speak to the mountain, the mountain will be there waiting for you. Thank you, Jesus. So you have to speak to the mountain. Because when you are looking at God and say, God, remove this mountain, God is saying to you, remove it. I'm giving you power. I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you dominion. You remove it. You speak to it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So it says, resist the enemy. You bind your enemies. Lose yourself from every evil yoke. You lose yourself from every evil yoke or chain of hardship. Lose yourself from every chain of limitation or bondage to the enemy. Lose yourself. No, lose yourself, child of God. Lose yourself. Lose yourself. Whatever is holding you down, lose yourself from it by the grace of God. Lose yourself. Lose yourself. Exercise your authority. Satan should not hold you down. Nothing should hold you down. When you know what it means to be freed from bondage, then free yourself so that you no longer be in bondage, whether to sickness or disease. Nothing should stop you from living your life to the fullest. Jesus came indeed that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Aspire to enjoy the fullness of that life. Aspire for it. Desire it. Anything walking against you, enjoying the fullness of life that Christ has already given to you. Lose yourself from that and command that and destroy that of your life. Speak to the evil altars from where the enemy is challenging you. Speak to the palaces of the wicked. Command them to catch fire. He said, it's not my word like as a fire. So the word of God in your mind is a fire, child of God. Release fire upon the altars of darkness. Release fire upon those covens. Release fire upon those palaces of the wicked. Wherever they gather together, command fire to fall down, begin to burn them and destroy their works. God said they will surely gather together against you, but not with his permission. So that is enough for you to know that when they gather together, you have the power, the authority by God to command fire to scatter them. Anywhere they take your name for evil, let fire fall there and begin to burn them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, for thus said the Lord, he said, let not arrogancy proceed from the mouth of the wicked any longer. Thank you, Jesus. He said, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. You speak the word of God, it's a rod. The word of God is a rod. The word of God is a hammer. The word of God is an arrow. It's a bow. Child of God, use the word of God and break the head of the wicked. Break their arms in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Send back their cousin to them. Everyone sending an arrow or even tell those arrows and cut to return back to the sender. You are giving your authority. You say back to sender. Every cause directed over me, over my family, over my business, over my job, over my health, I command the court to go back to the sender. Child of God, because you have been blessed, God said you have been blessed. So take side with the will of God concerning your life. And declare you are blessed. And you are not caught. And you refuse to be caused. You refuse to be brought again into any form of bondage. That's exercising the victory of Jesus. The Lord Jesus has set you free from every cause. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, say Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He has redeemed us from every cause, from Adam to date, every curse. Being made a curse for us. So if he has redeemed you from the curse and you know it, child of God, don't allow the enemy to put any curse upon you. Anybody causing, command the cause to go back, whether it's cause of sickness or disease or infirmity, premature death, whatever the cause, child of God, I command the cause to go back to the sender. Every cause of hardship, every cause of disappointment, every cause of barrenness, every cause, whatever the cause or difficulty, I command the cause to go back to the sender because we have been blessed and I refuse that you, even you should be caused. I refuse that you should be caused. Nobody should cause you. 
God has blessed you. You can't cost somebody that God has blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. So, child of God, enforce the victory of Jesus over Satan in your world. Enforce it. Enforce it. Another scripture says, You have given us what? Both power. You have given us what? Power to tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over all the power of the end. And he said, Listen to me. And he said, And nothing shall have any means hurt you. <laughs> when God says nothing shall have any means hurt you, child of God, nothing shall have any means hurt you. He said, you should, he said, Oh my God, thank you, Jesus. He said, He said, He, he, he said, he, he, when you when you what drink any poison or you eat any deadly thing, it shall not harm you, it shall not hurt you. Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful God we have. When you eat any deadly thing, when you eat any poison, God has the ability, the Holy Ghost can turn those poisons in your food, can turn the poison in your drink. God will turn the Holy Ghost will turn them into vitamins. It will turn them into vitamins. So when somebody say, I mark something on the ground, child of God, what can be on the ground other than scorpion or serpent or whatever? But God will say, you will tread it. It's not with hand, you will tread. It means that will match on scorpions and sc serpents. And he said, they shall by no means hurt you. This is not for you to go about and looking for a snake to kill and looking for a scorpion. To no. If they put scorpion on your way, they put serpent on your way, child of God, and you do not know, and you ignorantly step on them, child of God, the serpent will not hurt you. The scorpion will not hurt you. They will die because you are marching on them, not with your power. You are marching on them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Something will put food, something in your food, child of God. If you know it, don't eat it. If you know there is poison in this, we don't eat it. Don't try God. But if you don't know, and somebody puts poison, they put food in your, they put poison in your drink to harm you, child of God. If you don't know, enjoy the food. When you enjoy the food, you will finish eating and clean your mouth. The person will be expecting you to die, just like you know those people in that island of uh, is it my letter or somewhere. When Paul, after the shipwreck, Paul came out from the we came out from the sea, and then they began to gather uh, wood to make fire, and the viper came out and you know beat Paul, held itself to the hands of Paul. Paul shook it off, you know, and the serpent fell into the into the fire, and the people of the villages were expecting for Paul to fall and die. Why? Because they know that that this serpent was a poisonous one. It cannot bite somebody, and the person will live. But what happened? The more they were looking at Paul, the more were Paul <laughs> we were busy doing what he wanted to do. What happened? <laughs> they both began to what they want to worship Paul. You understand my point? Let the wicked, let those who think they can poison your food, let those who think they can poison your water, let those who think they can put something on the road for you to march and be hot, let them be disappointed. Let them be disappointed. Because of your faith in the word of God, because your faith in God, that as God has said it, so shall it be. I will drink a poison. If I drink any poison, ignorantly, if I eat any deadly thing, ignorantly, it shall not hurt me. Why? Because I have the power. I have the word, the, the anointing. I have the word, the spirit of life. Do you know what that is? The Bible called the spirit of endless life. You have the life of God. The life that is in the blood of Jesus. And because of that life, death cannot take over your life. You can be near unto death, but God will set you free. You can't die prematurely unless you give yourself to death. And I pray for you that every plan of the enemy or whatever they are program projected into your body, into your mind, into your bones, into your organs to cause death. I command them to die by the reason of the life of God in you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's still a lot of quicken your body. There's still a lot of quicken your mortal body. You shall live and not die, child of God. I say you shall live and not die. You shall live and not die because you have the life of God in you. You shall live to, ex to exalt God, to glorify God here in the land of the living. Thank you, my Father. Look at that. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you power to tread on serpents, to tread on serpents and scorpions 
and over all, not some, all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. God is one, God said, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing means nothing. Nothing is not some things. Nothing is not a little thing. He said, nothing, 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 nothing shall by any means hurt you. Fire will not hurt you. Remember, they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abad make into the furnace of fire. They didn't ask uh, what his name. They didn't ask uh, Nebuchadnezzar, oh, throw us into the fire. No. But listen to me. Anybody that will throw you into fire, the fire will destroy the person. Because those who, who bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abad, Nebuchadnezzar, and threw them into the fire, the Bible says they were consumed by the same fire. But did the fire hurt Shadrach, Meshach, and Abad, they go, no. The Bible says they were not. Not even the smoke or the fire. You know? was melt or perceived on their body. Why? Because God has the power to make fire fireless. Who created the fire? You can't use what my father has created to hurt me. Nobody can use what the Lord God Almighty, unless Satan is going to create that thing, but unfortunately he cannot create anything. There is nothing in existence that God did not create. That is why God said he created the smith that blows the coal in the fire. He created the waste that destroys, that carry what the smith has created to go and destroy. He said, no weapon formed by the smith and carried by the waste to destroy, against you shall prosper. No weapon. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But will they fashion any weapon? Yes. It doesn't matter. Let them go and form their weapon. Their weapon will use their to destroy themselves. And I command them that their weapon destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he said the wicked shall be destroyed by their own wickedness. Thank you, Jesus. He said, who that digs a pit shall fall into his own pit. That pit they had dug, they will fall into it. That pit they had dug. <laughs> yeah? That pit they had dug for you. Ah, for us, they will enter into the, They will bury it in their own pits. God said, we cause the enemy to be fed with their own flesh. And be made drunken with their own blood as a sweet wine. Child of God, believe this, believe this, believe this, and declare and decree. I declare, I am for the victory of Jesus in my life. Therefore, every pot, every fire that the enemy has kindled against me, I command the wicked to be destroyed by their own fire. And I command them to boil their own flesh in their own pot. I command them to cook their own flesh in their own pot. I command them to boil their own blood in their own pot. To become what? Drink for them and let them be intoxicated by their own evil blood and be perished and destroyed by their own blood. Thank you, Jesus. So, child of God, don't be afraid. When you are afraid, you're not be able to speak <laughs> into your life. You understand what point? When you are afraid, you're not be able to speak the word of God into your life. When you are afraid. So, don't be afraid. Stand on the word of God. Know what God says. Know that God has given you authority. Know that God is inside of you. God is not coming to be you unless you are not giving your life to Christ. If you are giving your life to Christ, God is right as I speak. God is inside of you. You have Christ in you. He said Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ already in you. Know that scripture. He said that Christ may dwell in their heart by faith. In your heart by faith. So it is believing that he is there. That is why he is there. If you don't believe, he's not there. So he said that Christ may dwell in their hearts by faith. So let Christ dwell inside you by faith. See Christ in you. As I speak, see Christ in you. It's not coming to be in you. It's already inside of you. Thank you, Jesus. So stand and don't be afraid. Stand on the word of God and declare and enforce the victory of Jesus. Which is your own word, victory. His victory is your victory. Thank you, Jesus. Enforce it with what? With authority. With authority. Speak with authority. Don't speak as though you don't as though you are not sure. Speak with authority. He said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. So if someone has given you, believe it. He has said, I have given you. So believe it and exercise it and speak with authority and in faith when you speak speak with faith when you command command in faith hallelujah because in the scripture says what it is your faith in the victory of jesus over satan and the host of darkness that is your victory look at first john chapter 5 verses 4 and 5 he said for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world whatsoever is born of god and overcome the world. 
And this is the victory. This is the victory that overcome the world. Thank you, Jesus. Even what? Our faith. Your faith in him that has overcome the world is your victory over the world. Your faith in him that has overcome the world is your word, your victory over the world. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, who is he that has overcome the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Remember, this is the foundation of the church. This is funny. That when, when Peter, when John had a disciple, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And the, the, the disciple, some of them began to say, some people say you, you, are, you are a liar. Some people say you are you are you are this, one of the prophet now. He said, But you, you yourself, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And then Peter now say, um, you are the you are Christ, the son of the living God. You are Christ, the anointed one. The son of the living God. And he said, he said to Peter, He said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. This is a revelation. And the church of God on earth is founded, it is built upon this revelation. That is why I say, Who is she that covered the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of the living God. Do you understand that? And he said, Upon this revelation, I give you what? First of all, I will build my church upon it, and I will be my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail the gates. The gates of the end shall not prevail. Satan should not lock you out of your business, out of your job. Satan should not lock you out of your out of your way. Should not lock you out of your blessings. And every power of darkness standing against your progress, against your life, against your prosperity, your business. I command them to be destroyed. We bind them and we command them to get out of the way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cannot be locked out because the Lord has given us a key. So, child of God, use that key. You say, Lord, I thank you have given me the keys of the kingdom of heaven. With this key, every door that the enemy has shut against me, Lord, I open them. <coughs> I open them. The doors of progress, the doors of promotion, the doors of favor. The doors of breakthrough. I open the door, financial doors. I open doors on every side unto me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Not with my power, not with my padlock, not with my own key, but with the keys of the kingdom of heaven that God has given to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have overcome the enemy. You are not going to. The question you ask yourself, are, are, you, are you born of God? Are you a child of God? If you believe that the child of God, child of God, you have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe? Because that is the foundation. That is the foundation of the church. He said you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? If you do, child of God, if you do to this question, if you believe, number one, it means you have overcome the world. Not going to overcome. <clears throat> you have already overcome the world right now. As we, are, as we are there, you have overcome the world. You are not going to tomorrow. No. Right now, you have overcome the world. Say, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world and all his forces of darkness and all the challenges. I overcome them because I'm a believer. I believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Child of God. The Lord through his death, notice, the Lord through his death on the cross has set you free. The Lord Jesus has set you free from every form of satanic bondage. Because he said that the Lord Jesus Christ, through death on the cross, destroyed the devil that had the power of death to deliver those who have been subject to what? To bondage through the fear of death. So if you believe, the Lord has set you free. And if the Lord has set you free, why would you want to allow the devil to bring again to bondage? Refuse to be brought again to the Lord has set you free. So maintain your freedom. Maintain your freedom. That is why he says in Galatians, he said, What? Well, stand free. 
Stand fast, stand fast. Means stand fast in the liberty where we Christ has set you free. Stand fast on it. Stand gidiba. Stand can't be. Stand unmovable. Stand, 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 stand. Stand like a rock. Stand and don't be moved. Don't let the devil deceive you and make you think that the devil has power. Every power of darkness working against your mind, the Lord sets fire on them. You come, command them to be destroyed. I bind every demonic and every evil hand that is lifted against you, against us. May the hand be withered up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May those mouths that are speaking evil be shut up and catch fire. May those evil eyes be smitten with the arrows of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He says, stand fast in the liberty, in the freedom. Child of God, stand fast. In the liberty, Christ has set you free. He has set us free. So stand fast in that word, in that freedom, and don't allow the enemy to put you down or bring you again into bondage. Whether bondage to failure, bondage to poverty, bondage to sickness, bondage to disease. Re refuse. Refuse. Say, I refuse that any sickness or disease will inhabit my body. My body is a temple of God. God, the Almighty, cannot stay in the same body with Satan with any sickness or disease or infirmity. I reject and I refuse every form and appearance of sickness or disease in this body. I'm a child of God, the temple of the Most High God, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So, child of God, stand firm and hold fast to the door and the gates of your life by faith. By faith, it's not that you are going to go to the door and begin to push your door. You know, that the enemy wants to come into your house and then you just at the back of the door. And no, stand fast in faith and hold fast to the door, hold fast to the gate and say, No, I reject any power of darkness to come into my life. Apply the blood of Jesus on your gates, on your doors, on your, your walls, on your window. Cover your property with the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, when the spirit of death shall pass through, when the enemy shall see the blood, they will pass over you. When the enemy shall see the blood of Jesus, they will pass over you. What? There is life in the blood of Jesus. When they see life in your properties, when they see life in your life, they will know that there's no place, no room for death, and they will pass over. And may the blood of Jesus cover you, cover your properties, cover your job, cover your business, your family. May the blood, blood, blood of Jesus soak your spirit and body, your organs, your tissues, your bones, your marrows, your joints, be soaked in the blood of Jesus Christ. Every trace of death, every virus or bacteria or germ or parasite seeking to work against you, I command them to catch fire and I command that they flush out of your life by the blood of Jesus into Tartarus. Not tomorrow, but right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father. Bless every your holy name. So, child of God, by faith, hold fast to your door. Hold fast to the gates. Yes, and don't allow the enemy to come. The Holy Ghost will help you. I said the Holy Ghost will help you. The Holy Ghost will help you. Thank you, Jesus. I said the Holy Ghost will help you to stand against them. Because God has said when the enemy will even want to come like a flood, the Holy Ghost will raise a standard. He said when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard. May the Lord raise a standard for you tonight. May the Lord raise a standard for you always. That the enemy will not be able to come with that evil wind or flood into your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God said when you pass through the water, the water shall not drown you. When you pass through the river, it shall not overflow you. No, child of God, you will pass through the water. You will pass through anything, child of God. You will not be drowned. You will not be carried away by the water. Why? Because God is with you. God is inside of you. Jesus was in the boat. The boat didn't capsize. There was wind. There was storm. No problem. As long as child of God, God is inside of you. You will not capsize. Your boat will not capsize. I say your ship will not capsize. Why? Because God is in the same boat with you. The Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The Lord is with us. He's with us. Hallelujah. The Lord is with us. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. So don't give up. Don't give the enemy any space. When God says resist, it means don't give any space. Don't give the enemy one inch. Listen to me. If you give Satan one inch in your life, it's going to take three miles. Not, I mean, just one inch. 
one inch of space. You get sit down one inch of space in your life, you're going to take three miles. Three, in fact, three square miles. Three square miles. Three square miles. You want to occupy everything. So don't give me room in any room. The Bible says, give the devil no room. Give him no space. The Bible says, be vigilant. Be vigilant, child of God. Don't be carried away by, by your flesh. Don't be carried away by unnecessary, what would I call it? Oh, unnecessary un, 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 un excitement. Don't become unnecessary excited that you lose your focus. You lose your vigilance. Don't lose your vigilance. Don't get on carried away. All those things are made able to laugh. You forget yourself. Don't forget yourself. The enemy is looking for every single opportunity to come inside. The Bible says, Where men slept, where men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears. Where men slept, don't allow the enemy to come and sow tears. And you wake up and begin to say, Ah, where did it happen? It's because you were careless. God has already assured, God already warned you. He said, Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Why did he say be vigilant? He said, Because your adversary, the enemy, is moving around looking for what to devour. May you not be his prey. May you not be his prey. May you not be those that he will devour. Every attempt of the enemy to devour you, may the enemy meet with resistance by the grace of God and by the power and the help of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. Child of God, there are challenges. We can't deny it. There are challenges all over the world. There are tribulations already. Yes. But the Lord said, listen, <laughs> God said, there will be tribulations in the world. There will be challenges in the world. He said, but what? He has given you peace. He has given us peace. He said, therefore, be of good cheer. Because he, the Lord Jesus, has overcome the world. He has overcome the world. He said, the world will have tribulation. That is why I said to you, child of God, as long as you are here on this earth, the end will plan, they will gather together, they will rise, but don't be afraid. Remain the peace of the Lord. Allow the peace of Jesus to garrison your heart. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yes, they are gathering. Yes, don't be afraid. They are rising and coming against you. Don't be afraid. They will all fall for your sake. They will all fall for your sake. Command them. I say, all of you gathering together in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you by the word of the Lord to fall and be smitten and be broken to pieces in Jesus' mighty name. For thus says the Lord, Hallelujah. For thus says the Lord, you will gather together against me that anointed the child of God, but not with God's permission. And God says, any boy that will gather together against me, I fall for my sake. God says, you will take counsel. Your counsel will not stand. God says, you will speak your word. Your word will not stand. Therefore, every word you have spoken over and against my life, I command them to return back upon your head. We speak in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything you threw at me, whether arrows or stone, whatever you have thrown at me, my family ability, I command them back to sender in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So enter into the peace of the Lord. The Lord has given you peace. Child of God, rejoice. You know, He said in the book of death, He said, Count it all joy. Not when you don't have problem. He said, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse trials and temptation, good mean temptations will come. Challenges will come. But child of God, don't be moved. Count it all joy. Because the one in you is greater than the challenges. The one in you is greater than the trials. The one in you is greater than the problem. Count it all joy. Stand your faith and command the, the temptation to get out. Command the problem to get out. Because you are a child of God. You have been redeemed from all troubles. The devil should not put anything on you. You are an overcomer. Child of God, as you resist, resist in faith. Stand in the word of God. Enter into and enjoy the peace of God. Like I said, by faith, the Lord that dwells in you is the Prince of Peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord who dwells in us is the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace dwells in me. The King of Glory dwells in me. The King of Glory dwells in you. The Prince of Peace dwells in you. You can't have the Prince of Peace in you and something will trouble your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. Thank you, our God. So believe, child of God, and experience the, 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 his, promise, his promised peace in your life. Believe and enjoy it by faith. Enjoy it by faith. Look at that. John chapter 16, verse 33. John 16, 33. He said, This have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world, 
you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Do you see what he said? In the world, you have tribulation, you have challenge, but in him you have peace. Be of good cheer. Rejoice. In the same thing, he said, count it all joy when you fall into a double trust and temptation. Child of God, count it joy. Can't enjoy. Don't let the enemy steal your joy. Don't let anybody steal. The enemy will come up with framed, you know, accusations to frame you up, to accuse you. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. All of those who are accusing you falsely, they will fall for your sake. Did you understand my point? They will fall for your sake. The Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. He will accuse you in order to nail you. But listen to me. All of them that gather together to accuse you, they will fall for your sake. By the grace of God, everyone gathering, that their network, that their evil network, wherever they are, whether in this Lagos, in your village, or anywhere, wherever they gather. Because, child of God, the satanic network in the realm of the spirit is something else. But it doesn't matter. The Lord our God, sees everything. The, he's the Alpha and Omega. Anywhere they are, God is there already because God is everywhere. So anywhere they gather, no matter their network, they lost scatter their network and set confusion in their camp. And let nobody trouble your life. Let those who are accusing you, therefore, let the Lord return the accusation upon their head by fire and by speed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he gives peace, he says nobody can make trouble. <laughs> I like that. Because first of all, look at John 14, 27. He says, peace I live with you. Peace I live with you. Okay? My peace I give you, not as a word give it. I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Did you see that? The peace I give you is not as the word gives. So the peace of God is not when you have money. When you have new car, when your dog happens, when you when something good happens to you, you say, Oh, I have peace now. My heart. Be at peace at all times. Whether the way is a heavy wind, be at peace. And then you speak to the wind and say, Peace be still. Exercise the peace of Christ in you. You know, Jesus was in the boat. The prince of peace was in the boat with disciples. And the Bible said, There came a strong with a great storm. And then they began to sink, but they cannot sink. And the disciples were afraid they were going to perish. And they went to wake up Jesus Christ, who was sleeping because he didn't care. Eh? Why would he be worried when he, when he had power and authority over the wind? And they woke him up and said, Master, tell us, tell us not that, that we perish. He looked at them, people of little faith. The Bible said he spoke to the wind and said, be Peace, peace, be still. You know what? I command what? Peace to reign. And you, wind, be quiet. Be quiet. Be still. Don't move again. And there was calm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we sing that song. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He spoke to the wind. Hallelujah. He calms the storms. Hallelujah. Child of God, speak to the wind in your life. Speak to that storm and say, You storm by the authority in the name of Jesus. I say, Peace be still. Peace be still in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God has given you power. He has put his peace in your mouth. He has given you the grace. Look at Job. I like this. I like Job. Look at Job chapter 4. I'm going to read from Classic Amplified. Job. He said, When he gives peace, when the Lord gives, when he gives quietness, that quietness means peace. And security from oppression when you get quietness who then can condemn who then can condemn you and cause you to die who then can condemn you and cause you to be into problem who then when he hides his face withdraw his favor and help who can behold him and make him gracious whether it be of a nation or a man by himself child of god may the lord not withdraw withhold his face or his help from you May the Lord not be quiet in your life. May He not be quiet in any decision concerning you. Hallelujah. May the Lord grant that the peace He has given to you. Child of God, you enjoy that peace. Enjoy that peace by the grace of God. Enjoy that peace by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has overcome the devil and triumphed over principalities and power and has made us more than conquerors. He has made us what? More than conquerors and overcomers in him. 
Say, I am more than a conqueror. Jesus overcame the devil and gave me the victory. So I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. I overcome the enemy. I overcome Satan. I overcome all his demonic hosts of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our God. Yes, hallelujah. First uh, John. First John chapter 4, verse 4. He said, you are of God, little children. You are of God. Say, I am of God. I am of God. And he said, you are of God, little children. I have overcome them. You are not going to overcome them. You have already overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is in you? The Lord is in you. The hope of glory is in you. The most high God is in you. El Shaddai is in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. Oh my God. The Lord is in you. The most high God. The higher than the highest. The mightier than the mighty. The stronger than the strongest. He that passed water, divided the Red Sea. He that quenches the flame of fire. He that removed mountains. He is in you. And he that is in you that raises the dead back to life. He is greater, mightier than he, the devil that is in the world. The one that raised up Jesus back to life. Hell couldn't stop him. Death couldn't stop him. He's inside of you. Death has no power over your life, child of God. Why? Because the author of eternal life is inside of you. The quickening spirit, the author of it, the, 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 the spirit of eternal life, the spirit of everlasting life is inside of you. Thank you, my God. Look at Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Romans 8, 33. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8, 33. He said, who shall, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who will lay anything to your charge? You have been discharged. You have been acquitted. Because Jesus took away every right handwriting that was contrary against you, took them out to nail them to the cross. He has washed your sins away. He has washed away with his blood. Who then can go them to your own child? Who can accuse you and say you are accused, you are guilty? Say, I am not guilty. I am not guilty. He said in the book of Colossians that Jesus had saved us to present us unto God holy, unblameable, in other words, you cannot be accused, unreprovable, Yes, in his sight, who then can accuse you that have been discharged and acquitted? Who can, who can accuse you? You have been discharged, you have been acquitted in the court of God. Hallelujah. There is no court higher than the court of God, the supreme court of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have been discharged and acquitted in the final supreme court of heaven. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Who then can now hold it to your own charge? You that God's elect. Is it is God that justifies? You have been justified. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even now at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Jesus is pleading before God. God is not seeing you with it directly. God is seeing you with the eyes of the finished work of Christ. So God cannot just accuse. God is seeing you as redeemed. He's seeing you as holy, as righteous, because all our sins have been laid upon Jesus, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. So in Christ, we are clean. In Christ, we are holy. In Christ, we are the redeemed of God. Hallelujah. In Christ, we have been justified. Hallelujah. Now, look at this. I like this. Thank you, Jesus. But 35, who shall now separate us from the love of Christ? Do you love Christ? Knowing, that, knowing what Christ has done for you. Who will separate you? God, Christ loves you. He loves you. Do you love him? Not that he loves you. If he didn't love us, he would not have come into this world to die. He said, for God so loved the world. God, that he gave his only begotten son. God loves the world. Christ loved us because if he didn't love us, he would not go to the cross to die for us. He loved us. Hallelujah. He died for us. Hallelujah. So he said then, who, what then can separate us from that love? He said, shall tribulation, or what? Or distress, or persecution, or famine, or, or nakedness, or peril, or this world. What will separate you? Listen to me. If you stop worshiping God because you don't have clothes to wear, then it means you don't know God. If you stop worshiping God because of persecution, then you don't know God. 
You need to stop worshiping God or loving Him because of famine, because of hardship, poverty, financial difficulty. Then you don't know God. You don't know Him. You don't know what He has done for you. You don't know His plan for you, first of all. You don't know His plan for you. Because, listen, God didn't tell you all these things will not happen. Whether they come or not, child of God, stand your ground. Stand your ground. God will, God will make a way for you because He has a better plan for you. He said, after you have suffered a little, then God will settle you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> look, at, look at this. Look at this. Eh? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. And we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. We are counted. Not that you are going to the slaughter. You are counted. It's like you are a sheep to the slaughter, but you will not be slaughtered by the grace of God. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. You can't be more than conqueror when they have slain you. You can. He said, in all this, in famine, in persecution, in distress, in challenges you are going to, you are more than a conqueror. Don't give up, child of God. Don't give up. Your miracle is on the corner. If I'm knocking on your door, it's about to enter. Your miracle is about to enter. So receive that miracle. Enter into your miracle. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. For you are more than a conqueror. You are more than conqueror. Don't give up, child of God. Don't let anything stop you from loving God. Don't let anything stop you from holding on to God. Nothing should separate you. Hallelujah. The Bible says many death are the afflictions. Of the righteous, many are the challenges of the righteous, many are the opposition. The enemy will oppose you, we want to frustrate you. But, child of God, God will surely deliver you from every one of them if you don't give up. Stand your ground, stand in faith, be obedient, amen. Be obedient and put on the whole armor of God, the armor of righteousness, the armor of light on you, and be vigilant. And not be ready to resist. Ready to resist. Resist the devil. The enemy, listen to me, is your faith. He said, count it all joy when you fall. He said, for the trying of your faith. It's your faith the enemy is trying. It's your faith. So don't give up. Know that it's your faith. Your faith in who? Your faith in God. So don't give up, no matter what. Don't give up on your faith in believing that what God said about you shall come to pass. Don't give up. Don't give up. Thank you, Jesus. Don't give up. He says in the, the second Corinthians, that's chapter 10, you know, and let me go straight to verse 6. He said, and be in readiness to punish every disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled, when your obedience is complete. When your own obedience. So, child of God, submit yourself to God. Be obedient to God. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. <laughs> Don't doubt God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't doubt God. Look at First, first Peter chapter, chapter 5. He said, casting all your cares, all your cares, your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Child of God, God cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking who to devour. He's roaring lion, seeking to devour. Who resist steadfast in the faith. Resist the devil in the faith. You hear that? Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So you are not the only one going through challenges. You are not the only one going through persecution. You are not the only one going through all these things. But listen to me. That you are not the only one doesn't mean that it's going to be so. You understand my point? You understand my point? <laughs> no, you understand my point. That you are going through doesn't mean it's going to be permanent. Amen. God will make a way for you. God will deliver every one of you going through it. God will deliver every one of us. No matter the challenge, no matter the position, God will make a way. God has made a way. Just wait patiently. You will enter into your liberty. You will physically, and by faith you have entered into it. But by physically speaking, you will enter, you will enjoy your freedom. You will look up one day and discover that you are free. Nothing again, no trouble. You are just enjoying peace, peace all around you. Hallelujah. So enter that peace by faith. And it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. Now, look at verse 10. He said, But the God of all grace, who has called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, God will permit you. God did not take Israel from me, just straight bam, into the promised land. He didn't fly them. They went through the wilderness. They saw scorpions. They saw serpents. They, they saw the Red Sea. 
You understand my point? Some gave up. Those who gave up died in the wilderness. Those who doubted died in the wilderness. But those who believed and followed Moses, they got into the promised land. Be among those that believe to enter into your promised land. Be among those that believe to enter into your joy, to possess your possession. Be among those that believe. Don't follow doubters. Don't follow those who say, shall I, when shall this thing be? Is it possible? It will come to pass. Because God who said it to you will not lie. God is not demanded. He will not repent. He has said it. His word, his promise has not returned to him void in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, after that you have, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. May the Lord settle you. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord establish you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So finally, finally, child of God, remember what we are talking about. Remember to resist. God said what? Resist the devil. Resist the devil. But before you resist the devil, God, know that God resists the proud. God himself resists the proud. Don't be proud. Submit yourself to the word of God. God resists the proud. God gives grace to the humble. So be a humble person. Don't be proud. Be humble. Hallelujah. Submit yourself to God. When you submit yourself to God, then you can resist the devil. Somebody say, if you don't know how to kneel before God, you not know how to stand against the devil. So you must, be, you must know how to kneel before God in humility, in prayers, in fellowship, so that you're able to stand against the enemy that will rise up against you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because in prayer and in fellowship with God in the world, you receive grace, you receive strength, you receive what? You receive confidence, you receive boldness. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And then you can stand up against Satan and command the devil to get out of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my letter, my shatter, my letter. Look at this. Look at this. He said, James chapter 4. That is fine. He said, Do you think that the scriptures yet in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lost it to envy, but he giveth more grace. God giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hand, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into joy. Not like you are coming to say, God, I'm sorry that you are smiling and though, that, that though God is your mate. Yeah? You know you committed sin. You know you have done something wrong. Then you say, God, I'm sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. He said, What? Well, let that your laughter be turned into what? Into mourning and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. I pray for you that God will have mercy upon you and lift you up. From wherever the enemy have put you that you are not supposed to be. May the Lord lift you out of that trouble. May the Lord lift you out of that evil situation. May the Lord lift you out of that challenge. May the Lord lift you out of that financial crisis. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Draw nigh to God, child of God. Draw nigh to him in fellowship. Draw nigh to him in prayers. I say draw nigh to him. Be quick to repent. Be quick to repent. That was the difference between Saul and David. So let the anointing of David be upon you. Be quick to repent. Don't be like Saul. I want to give a excuse why he committed the sin. You don't need that. Don't be quick to repent and tell God God is ready. If you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God is not looking for who to keep. God is not looking for who to punish. God is merciful, but His mercy is towards them that fear Him, towards them that reverence Him. So be quick to repent, and God will have mercy and forgive you. And I pray that as you are quick to repent, in fact, may you not fall into temptation. Talk more of coming to repent. May you not fall into any trap Satan has set for you to cut your sin against God. May you jump them and pass over them. May you not fall into them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So finally, child of God, finally, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 and 10 to 12. He said, But what thou hast fully known, he said, But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Paul speaking to Timothy. By the Spirit of the Lord. You have known fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience. Verse 11. The persecutions also, the afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecution I endured. Paul endured persecution. Child of God, persecution will not kill you. Endure it. Amen. God will send help to you. Amen. Now, I endure. But out of them all, 
Oh my God. Out of them all, the Lord delivered me. The Lord that delivered Paul out of all the temptations, all the trials. All that. May the Lord deliver you from every temptation, trial, problem you are going through right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say the Lord deliver you from every one of them. He say, yea, all that, all, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. So don't be afraid. God deliver Paul from all the persecution. God will deliver you from your persecution. God will deliver you from your, from your troubles. God will make a way for you. He made a way for Israel. He made a way. Yeah, he delivered Shadrach, Mishnah, and Badu from the furnace of fire. He delivered even Daniel, not only Daniel from the mouth of the lion, he also delivered Paul from the mouth of lion. That same God that delivered them, deliver you from every trouble and from the hand of those who are troubling your life. May the victory of Jesus, yes, rule and reign in your life. May the victory of Jesus over Satan, yes, take control, rest in your life. May you reign, may you swim in that victory. Child of God, use your mouth and command, therefore, every power of darkness seeking to bring into bondage, command them to get out because the victory of Jesus is your victory. Let nobody trouble you. Let nobody, as you delete, as you trust God, as you pray that, listen to me, God will surely deliver you. God will surely, God will make sure that you have peace in your life. God will make sure you have peace in your life. God, Christ has given you peace. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Listen to me. If you have been part of this meeting and you have not given your life to Christ, you, you, you read it in the scripture. You saw it there. He said, Who is ever overcome but he that is born of God? He that believes that Jesus, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So if you have not given your life to Christ, do so now. Ask the Lord to come into your life and wash you with his blood and ask him to be your Lord and your Savior. So just say this with me. Almighty God, I thank you for your word I've heard tonight. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son who died for me, who died on the cross and destroyed the devil that had the power of death, who washed me with his own blood. I receive him today as my Lord and my Savior. And I say you are now my father. Jehovah, you are now my father. I am your child. Heaven is my home. Every covenant agreement, connection between my life and hell and the devil, I break, I destroy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cannot be in heaven and be connected to hell. I'm not in heaven. Any connection between me and hell it destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, thank you. All my trials, all my challenges, every particular, I hand them over to you, Lord. I speak peace into my life by your word. I speak the victory of Jesus into my life by your word, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for giving me the victory, making me what I conquer. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. And I pray for every one of you that have been part of this meeting and every one of you that will hear this message that the Lord deliver you from all your challenges. The Lord cause healing to take over your body. Anything that is called sickness, whatever God has not put in you, I command you to, to, to bow to the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And I, declare, and I declare and I enforce the victory of Jesus over Satan in every area of your life. I say peace of God upon you, the peace of Jesus upon you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you live to enjoy the victory of Jesus in your life over the works of the devils. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, child of God, brethren, we'll come to the, to the end of another, another wonderful topic. Hallelujah. So it is my prayer that from now on, may you resist the devil. May you always be vigilant. May you have grace, yes, to, to, to exercise the, the, the authority, the dominion, the power that God has given to you. Don't be afraid. Be courageous. Yeah, be courageous. Be bold. Be bold. You are a winner already. You are more than a conqueror. You are, you are, you are a victor. Hallelujah. So be bold and allow God to, to rule and reign in your life. You need to enjoy the blessings of God. You are blessed already. You are not cursed. So I pray that you have grace to enjoy the blessing of God. Let nobody trouble your life again. Let God recompense tribulation upon any body that will trouble your life. According to his promise in Jesus' mighty name. You, your family, your business, your job, all of you are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May the Lord not give up on you. Yeah, may the Lord not be silent in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. May he come to uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. May he keep you by the power of his name. May he fight for you in every situation and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so we come to the end of the meeting. And then uh, I just want to remind you again, this weekend, Sunday, we have our Sunday service. 
the 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 the, the, the young people's program, you know, uh, 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 the whole month of uh, May is going to be their month. So God is going to speak, you know, to us because the Bible said in the month of babes, God have ordained strength. God is going to speak to us powerfully through the young people, and uh, I expect that you come. You're going to hear some things, and I believe that God will do a new thing also in your life. You know, it's a rise month, the month of arise, arise, arise. You arise. You will arise from every challenge. You will arise above the enemy. You will arise above the problems of life by the grace of God. You will shine in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The glory of the Lord shall be seen upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I expect that you'll be part of the meeting on Sunday. So you are welcome. And when you come in, come in faith. Okay, then next Wednesday, next Wednesday, same time, 7 o'clock, we look forward to meeting again. But by the grace of God, it's going to be another topic. This is wonderful. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. We exercise the victory of Jesus. We, we proclaim, we declare it, we enforce it in our life. And we will live to enjoy the, that, that victory because Christ has already achieved, accomplished it for us. Hallelujah. Let nobody trouble us. We bear upon us the mark of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. What is again? What is again? I want to come again. Well, there are young people in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Design is in the same of the world that are dear children. Well, even though they are young men by age, but well, we are all children of God. Hallelujah. So we're going to hear from them. So just come and listen. I'm not talking about children of uh, age 12. I'm not talking about children of age uh, 10. They are not teenagers. These are, these are, yeah, these are what do you call them now? They are young men. Okay, young men. Young men. Okay, young men, young men, and young women. Okay, young men and young women. But don't forget, you know, we are all we are babes in Christ. God will speak through them. Hallelujah. That's the most important thing. So let's come believing that God is going to speak through these young people to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now, before we leave, I encourage you to give your offering. Don't come to the presence of God with empty hand. And as you give, I pray that the Lord will honor His word in your life. And cause men to give back to you. Good measure, present, shake it together and running over. The Lord will be the devourer. And if you don't have, may the Lord put money in your hand. May the Lord open the door of financial blessing unto you. Because he's the one that gives the seed to the sower and the bread to the eater. May you not lack the things that you have need of. May the Lord supply and meet your every need in Jesus' mighty name. Satan is rebuked. Therefore, child of God, I pray that God, as you give, God will give you durable riches. May God open the door of financial blessing unto you on every side. Your soul shall not be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for receiving the offerings. Thank you, Father, for blessing your children in return. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So until then, child of God, don't forget, submit yourself to God. Don't live a proud life. Be humble. Be vigilant. Hallelujah. So stay safe. Stay humble. Okay, stay above all, stay rapturing. Jesus is coming again. God bless you, and may the word of God bear fruit in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. So until Sunday, until we meet again, I say goodbye. I remain your pastor, Newton Delilah. Amen.